Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Tom Stewart here. I'm with Liz Trotter. Hey, Liz. Hey, Tom. Hey, Bridget. Hey, Carolina. It is Friday afternoon, fifth day of what month is this? June? June already. Good grief. <gasps> Today is a day. Somebody's birthday, or uh oh, I, I've blown it. What did I miss? I hope it's not my anniversary. What? <laughs> It's not. It's not my anniversary. I was like, uh oh. I know. I feel like it's an important day. I just can't think of what it is. Somebody's. I bet. Guess I better hit up Facebook. Yes, I'm with you, Bridget. Woohoo! Yay! Thinking this is Friday. Happy Friday, everybody. Yay! Uh, oh, looks like we have a question here. I don't know if it's Carolina or Carolina. Uh, Tom, do you want to speak to why she's not able to sign her assistant up right now? Yeah, that is, we're silent at the moment. The the, the whole platform, we're, we're transferring over from the old one to the new one. And we sent an email out, actually a couple of them today. We kind of goofed one up a little bit in heading. But anyway, we got all that straight. And um, if you go to the website, it tells you too that we're going to be silent until... Um, Ding, ding. Let me let me do this. I'll just bring this up here. We're moving everything to the new platform. So if you go to schoolofmoderncleaning.com, it's going to tell you that we're going to be down until Monday morning at 10 o'clock. We're and we sent an email out today basically explaining why. We pushed all the data over and we kind of got most of everything together that we need to get together on the new platform. But it struck us that it's completely different in the old one. And it's really, um, it's got more functionality, which is good. But in order for, you know, the people who are managing this platform for their companies, they're going to need training that we haven't uh, offered them yet because you're going to be able to log in to this platform and sign your own people up for the class. And, it's going to give you more control over tracking their progress. It's, it's, it's going to be good. Um, but if we just turn this on without any guidance or support over the weekend, it would be, it wouldn't be fun for either one of us. So we're getting ourselves together and we're going to, going to turn all this on Monday morning at 10 o'clock. There'll be an email going out to everybody who has an account with more detailed information as to what they need to know and what they need to do. And, uh, Will we be off and running then? I see Steph is over here clapping. She gets it. <laughs> She's like me. Yes, more more support is better. Hate launching something new on a Friday. I'm so glad that um, everybody agreed to do this. It was it's so much better. I think. Uh, you know, on Friday. The first Friday of every month, the uh, Department of Labor releases the unemployment statistics for, for, for the prior month. And if you remember, we've been talking about all the insurance claims, unemployment claims that, that come in. We report those every Thursday. And I don't know, that number is over 30 million now, something like that. But a lot of the insurance, none of those, those claims, some of them are for just a loss of work, but they're still working, but maybe part-time as opposed to full-time, that could still result in a claim. And some of those claims, people have gone back to work. There were a lot of people predicting that the unemployment uh, number today would be a lot worse than uh, what it actually was because uh, there were some people that were thinking that we may have lost up to another 8 million jobs over the month of May, but they were wrong. By a fair amount, we gained about, I think it was 2.4 million. So we gained jobs. The unemployment rate went down today to still 13 point something percent. So that is, you know, 30% higher than what it was at the worst point of the recession. So it's still really bad, but people were shocked that uh, the unemployment rate, and yeah, Stephanie's talking about the uh, stock market. You know, I meant to check that. I didn't see where it closed, but I bet it was obscenely high. Um, anyhow, a lot of 
the jobs that were gained were basically people who were furloughed that went back to work. The way they track these numbers, they, they, they can, can give you a pretty good idea as to what industries, what sectors. And most of those jobs were people that were furloughed that went back to work. Thinking that a lot of that was uh, PPP money that was, was at play. Um, been interesting to see what this looks like moving forward. There's a lot of people thinking that getting that unemployment rate down from 13% to numbers lower, it's going to be, you know, there's no hanging fruit right now, but as time goes on, that number is going to be high for a long time and it's going to be hard to drive it down in the months ahead. So we're just going to have to watch that. But um, it was crazy and a, and a really big surprise. Not many people were expecting it to go that high. Or to, to go that way. Holy cow. Yeah. Did, did you see it was the biggest increase in jobs in one period since the 30s? Yeah. So I like that completely opposite spin on what we've been seeing. It's like, I guess the only way we could have this really big increase in jobs is because the, the loss was so devastating. It was, what was it, Tom? Unprecedented. I think it was unprecedented, right? No I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving it to you anymore, Tom. <laughs> um, so, it, and now this is also unprecedented. The biggest increase in jobs in one period since the 30s. So that's crazy. I know when I saw that, I was like, wow, who was expecting that? I sure as heck wasn't expecting that. So this, that, that's some great news. Yep, find the good. <laughs> I like mm -hmm. it. Yeah. And we don't know what's going to happen. But do you have a prediction, Tom? Are you thinking that things are going to kind of stay at the 13 level? You think they're going to drop off just a little, maybe 12, 11, and stick there? Or what are you thinking? Because not everything's open yet. I'm, I'm thinking that things are going to be rocking along and looking good, and people are going to be feeling good through the summer as long as – there aren't any significant spikes in, in you know COVID where people start getting fearful for their health again because right now it just kind of seems like you know it wasn't that long ago but it seems like it was just a long time ago that we were worried about actually you know spreading the disease or catching the disease or you know people yeah. lining up in the hallways of the hospitals because there were no beds and you know we're out of ventilators and a whole you know. Armageddon thing that was coming just uh, is a distant, distant memory. Numbers are better than last year. The automobile, yeah, Stephanie, they, the automobile, and they're selling, especially like larger vehicles, trucks. I mean, they got deals, though, like, like 84 yeah. month financing with no interest. Yeah. Uh, Tim was saying, I'm getting a new car hopefully next month in, or this month in June. So I was like, ooh, yay. Okay. That sounds exciting. But so um, I guess I'm not the only one, huh? It, it stands to figure that you know the mar stock market is going to keep keep clunking along and in, in, in an upward direction because you know the federal government keeps you know they can't fight the Fed is what they say and they keep dumping uh, more money. The more money they print, you know that's just gonna gonna keep that rolling for a while. Um, but same flip side of it, structurally, you know there's some jobs that just I don't see them coming back. You know, the whole cruise industry, the, you know, the, the airlines, uh, some of the hospitality, travel, leisure, restaurants, even if they come back, it's going to be hard for them to come back looking the way they did before, as long as we're worried about social distancing and, and, and those things. So, you know, maybe coming back is we were talking about this the other day, maybe it looks like 90 percent, but the 90 percent is not going to be spread across all industries. It's going to be impacting some more than others. And the ones that are more technology related and aren't uh, really um, driven by, you know, face-to-face -face interaction, they're going to, they're going to do the best. So Tom, I have a, a cruise and I think it's November. Are you thinking I'm going or not going? Are they going to be up and running or? Well, there's, you got a couple of couple of headwinds there. One, probably the cruise industry is is in the deeper hole of anybody in terms of figuring out what social distancing looks like on a cruise ship. 
and yeah. there's concerns that you know the virus is going to come back in the fall the way the flu does and other you know Everything viruses, else does, yeah you know, like that so you roll two of those together i would would probably say no hey, man, be, have they, have like they uh, what's their store i mean what are they what are they, i mean I'm assuming you've already paid. So what is their yeah. story now? There's people who had cruises scheduled last week. I'm assuming they get their money back, right? Yeah. Um, I, I'm not sure. So my sister-in-law who set up this cruise for all of us, it, there's a huge group of people going. She is a, not a cruise director, a, a travel director. And so she's, her thing is, hey guys, we're just on hold. We're just on. We're just on hold. Okay, Steph is betting that I'm going. Okay. Thanks, Steph. Okay, let, let's hope you're right and Tom's wrong. You guys want to take bets here on on whether or not it's going to happen? So she's saying hold. We don't know what's going to happen. Uh, the people, uh, different cruise lines are happening, handling it different ways. The same as the airlines are handling it different ways, right? If some are giving money back. Some are saying have a year. I also have a Disney trip that is like I had to miss. And they're giving us a year. Disney is giving us a well, more than a year through 2021 to do it. So we're planning on going there too. And I think April, end of March. So right after, actually right after foundation stop. So I'm going to come back from foundations. I'll be home a week. And then I'm going to Disney. Aren't, aren't some of the parks opening now, like Universal? They are open. And, yeah. They're open, but they are not, not everything is open. They're opening like some of the attractions, not all of them. Uh, some things don't, aren't conducive to social distancing, so they don't have that open. But I heard that they're having some pretty good turnout. Okay. So Stephanie has one coming up too. That's why she's like all about all about it for me, right? Fingers crossed. Uh, uh, her amusement park opens on Monday. Yeah. yeah, so they're all opening up. Yeah, I, I don't know. I guess we're we're gonna see how how things are going. I don't know. It's I I I'm confused by the way it it works with the heat because uh, things were growing like crazy in areas where it was really really hot. Yes. Right. And it didn't seem to be slowing it down. So I don't not see how seeing how the heat is connected as much. Like maybe it, that's what's making me think, well, maybe this is real. This because it's not necessarily connected. So I don't know. Is it better than you think? Maybe we're not going to get the downturn and it gets damp and cold or I don't know. I'm, I'm with stuff. My fingers crossed. Yeah, we we have a, a a team member that basically runs the office in in Greenville. Her name's Hillary, and her husband works at the local hospital, one of the local hospitals in in Greenville, South Carolina. And they're seeing an uptick in cases. They're um, starting to take. Uh, people who have like elective surgeries scheduled and sending them home and making more beds they're 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 gearing up like like right now like they think they're going to be getting more people admitted with with with, with covid here over the next couple of weeks they they've already seen it and they're attributing it to um, they've opened up, you know, restaurants and more outside activities and people are getting more relaxed and they believe they haven't yet started to see any potential uh, spread that could be attributed to, you know, some of the protests and those activities. But you know, they're they're at least planning for that. So it'll be interesting to see over the next week or so where their numbers go. Yeah. But like we talked about yesterday, we talked a little bit about that. Um, being outside, it seems, uh, you know, um, better better than a, a lot of the inside activities. But you're right, they are opening up a lot of stuff. Uh, beauty parlors are opened up, you know, yeah, some social distancing stuff in place, but they're open. But some things never really shut down. Like where we are, um, Fred Meyer, I don't know if you guys have that uh, grocery store that we have. 
they never shut down and there was never any social distancing in place there except at the check stand. Mm -hmm. So uh, we didn't have to wait to get into the store. Like at Walmart, you had to stand on those little, those big blue dots, right? Before you could even get into the store and they only let people in if people left. Um, but Fred Meyer, they never did any of that. And a, a lot of our stores were like that. Target, nothing, you know, they're just, Again, we don't have that many stores, <laughs> small city, and <laughs> we don't have that many restaurants, so small city. <laughs> so I don't know if that's the difference, but you know, I don't know. I guess I just there there are a number of articles that we've posted on the resource page that you know speak to you know it's 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 a matter of being exposed to the virus for for a more prolonged period of time and. Typically, that has to be indoors in a more confined setting. Um, yeah. Being a, going to a, a retail, you know, establishment, grocery store, just walking, you know, around, you're you're you're, you're fairly safe. Now, you know, if I'm working there and if I'm at the cash register for eight hours a day, I guess it just depends how many people are coming through that 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 might be contagious, and and how much face time you have with them. And some are. There's no way that, that nobody is. That's just, I can't imagine that that's possible, that none of the people that are contagious are going to Fred Meyer. That makes zero sense. No, so. Matt, Matt joined us yesterday and he was sharing, uh, there was a, um, I guess, a, a hairstyle, so a, a great clips, I think it was, in, in Missouri yeah. that, they had two stylists that were uh, that tested positive. They've been working the whole time, but they weren't able to trace any um, cases from that. Then he was expecting. I think he said, you know, the typical haircut at a, a great clips last about ten minutes. So maybe that wasn't long enough. To, to, yeah, to get. Yeah, there wasn't a sustained enough exposure. And, not, and he also said they only have like three stations or four stations. Our great clips does does better work than his does, I think. Uh, they actually wash your hair and everything there. Well, then, hey, then, again, then again, maybe Matt, I don't know, does Matt go there to get his hair done? Maybe it only takes him 10 minutes. He said he's been doing haircuts at home, the big buzz, right? Yeah. Uh, Tom, know. we should share our agenda for next week. I was, I forgot to uh, mention this earlier. My thought was on Fridays, it would probably make good sense for us to share that at the beginning of the, uh, the show, <laughs> the show of the Facebook Live. The show. The really big the show. show. Really big show. I'm not a shoe, right? Really big shoe. Who was that? That was Ed Sullivan. Ah, uh, yeah, Ed Sullivan. Yeah. All right, so for those of you that were not on yesterday, we are making a little bit of a format change uh, to how we're going to manage these calls. Uh, when we were in the midst of COVID-19 problems, we really, everybody just needed to have more information about safety and how to be safe in the COVID-19 world. And there was a lot of financial stuff going on, concerns, and, and everybody just needed more information. So we were doing our best to uh, fill that need. Now that a lot of that has dropped off, we thought, hey, well, maybe we should stop doing these Facebook Lives or maybe go every other day or maybe cut them back to a half hour. And we got a lot of pushback on that. No, <sighs> keep them going every single day for an hour and just figure out a different format. So. That's what we're doing now. I'm going to let Tom tell you a little bit more about that. Go ahead, Tom. Sure. Well, you know, starting on Monday, the uh, 8th of, of June, um, we're going to have more of a structured structured approach to this. We're going to cover a broader range of topics than just COVID-19. Um, no concerns. We're still going to be keeping an eye on PPP and the Small Business Administration and um, – we're going to have a lot to talk about that over the next couple of weeks, waiting for the SBA to come out with more guidance. So it's not like that we aren't going to be keeping up with that and sharing the latest information. We will, but we're going to be adding to that. We're going to 
be uh, scheduling more daily guests and we want to give you a heads up in advance as to what we're going to be doing so you can plan and use your time better if we're covering a topic that doesn't have a particular uh you know add value to you at this point then you know maybe you want to skip and if uh, we're doing something next week that is really important to you you would want to mark your calendar and make sure that that you're here because i mean you can go back and, and watch it later but we try to answer all the questions that come in and being here and being able to answer you get your questions asked and answered would uh would you know we believe would create more value so um for next week starting on monday John Day is going to be joining us, and he's going to be uh, sharing some some of the best practices that they've learned for recruiting. Uh, Sean works with with the company Blue Sky Services. I'm sure some of you uh, you guys know that, and uh, they do recruiting for service businesses. They recruit for cleaning companies. They you know a lot of different industries. I don't I don't even know lawn care, industry. window cleaning all of those and um he's gonna they've learned some tricks and he's gonna gonna share the, some of that information with us so if any of us are, are are struggling getting our head count where we we need it to be and i i know that that we are in our business um i'm looking forward to hearing what he's able to to share tuesday we're going to block out more for just uh current events and you know if anything happens over the weekend that's related to ppp we're going to Get you that information monday but tuesday is going to be a lot more to get caught up on what's happened over you know over the prior week um wednesday we're going to be lucky to have martha woodward come in um she's with quality driven software she's also a cleaning business owner been in the industry for a long time has a lot of uh good knowledge on a lot of topics but she's going to be sharing with us about culture building specifically at a time when we're reopening our businesses and trying to, to, to ramp up. It's a unique opportunity for us. And she's got some, some insights. I think they're going to be uh, useful. Thursday, we have a gentleman, Paul Weber. This is an acquaintance of, 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 of Liz's. Does he uh, live out there in, in, in Olympia? He does. He lives, uh, I'm not sure if he's here in Olympia, but he's fairly local. He might be in Tacoma or somewhere. So, he, he is he is local to me in Washington State. Yep, and he's going to be giving us information as business owners that we can use to share with with our team members, our employees, on financial planning. And um, I really believe that that's going to be a value add that as as employers, you know the. We have an obligation to help help all of our employees be successful and in, 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 in every dimension that we can. And there's, you know, it's, there's an opportunity for us to help help our workforce better understand what money is and, and, and how they can use it and how they can build wealth and create a better present and a better future as well. And um, I'm really excited about that. I'm, I'm hoping that. Uh, we're able to walk away with that with some really useful information. And Friday is going to be on the spot. And on the spot is a kind of a Q&A drill, fast uh, pace exercise that we do in our foundations class. And we have an on the spot timer that basically counts down 60 seconds. And uh, you, you know, our audience will ask a question and Liz gets a minute to answer the question. I get a minute to answer the question. And our surprise guest, who, if I told you who it was, it wouldn't be a surprise. So you're going to have to come in Friday. But our surprise guest also gets a minute to answer that question. So we got to be real fast. And once that minute is up, basically the, 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 the timer expires. You get a buzzer. And they have to be quiet. And it goes to the next person to answer the question. And, you know, We've we've done this live many times, and it's 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 really really a cool thing. Um, this will be the first time that I guess that we've ever done it virtually like this, but uh, I think it's going to be fun and, and and informative. So, what this means to you on Friday for on the spot, you need to have your questions ready, and the kind of questions that you're looking for are any questions that you would consider a smart business move. And let me give you an example. 
So I had somebody ask today in our success mastermind group, there, they got kicked out of their office and she wanted to know right now, like she has to leave really, really quickly. So should she get her office, an office that is only eight minutes away from her home that doesn't have laundry facilities and is not as close to her employee base as she would like, but it's only eight minutes. She'll be able to, her kid will be able to stay in the same school and um, it, it's convenient, very, very convenient for her on a personal level. And um, yeah, and that. And then her other option is almost 40 minutes away, 15 miles, almost 40 minutes. And her child would probably have to change schools because she wouldn't be able to <laughs> drive 40 minutes and drive back and to pick him up and then bring him back. And then she'd also probably end up working less. Um, but they have washer dryer. It's a nicer location. Oh, I forgot to mention the rent. And the rent at one location is closer to 800 and the rent at the other place is 1400 So her on-the-spot question was to the nine people that happened to be on this call today, which one should I do? Number one or number two? And just a quick answer. And so that, that's an example of what you might want to know for on the spot. A question that is maybe unique to your company that you just don't know. What should you do? Or what do what does somebody else's company to do? Or to do? Hmm, that was an interesting turn of phrase I had right there. Uh, so, so one, <laughs> Audra, one, I'll tell her. <laughs> Thanks, Audra. <laughs> um, so the questions that we've gotten uh, over the years, we've gotten... Wow, uh, so many questions. And uh, the questions that I remember because I like them, uh, your your top 10 favorite books, right? Or your top two favorite books. Or tell us all your favorite books for a minute. Um, we've gotten uh, your best culture building activities. You know, what are, how many can you give us in, in a minute? Um, Tom, you like the ones on insurance and stuff, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's all over the board, you know, what you know, questions about insurance, questions about, you know, pay plans, questions about leasing a car you know, or buying a car. You know, hi, you know, hiring, hiring a, anybody in your office, just kind of fill in the blank and when do I do it and how much do I pay them? And I mean, <clears throat> some of the questions are, I mean, we will give you our best answer. It might not give you the exact, okay, well now I know what I'm going to do, but you'll have uh, much better information to work with as you're, 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 you're sorting things. Sometimes we can give it the answer and say, yeah, this is crystal clear. This is what you need to do. But um, it's, 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 it's a good exercise. And once you get into it, um, usually there's, there's always an ample number of questions. Yeah, there's more questions than we will have time to answer. We, we, will do be foundations, we do it after dinner and it's kind of late in the day. And, you know, we get up early and we work hard throughout the entire day and usually it starts getting late. And it's like, come on, guys, we've got to we've got to shut it down. You know, one more, one more. And yeah, that, that is one thing. Probably the hardest part about foundations is leaving. You know, Tom and I, we have to travel after we leave the class. We have to travel a half hour to get back to Tom's house. And then we're going to have to travel again in the morning. So if we're there at, what, what time do we usually get there, Tom? About 7.30. About 7.30, 7.35. We're going to be out of there by 7.30, 8 o'clock at night. But they're like, one more question, mm -hmm. one more question. No, we got to go. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, there, there will be plenty of questions. So start thinking about your questions earlier in the week versus later. And usually what the questions are also is um, they're more uh, like, what would you do in this situation? And we'll tell you our perspective because uh, our, our surprise guest as well runs their company differently than Tom or I run our separate companies. So uh, yeah, it, it's, it's a good exercise. You get lots of different ways of thinking. All right, so that's the agenda. I'm glad it sounds like a lot of you guys like the agenda. Diane, Bridget, some people that I know, yay. Uh, Sarah Foundations is the best. Yeah. Oh. 
I've got a, finally, a, I did a, I, uh, um, in the mastermind group today, we did uh, train the trainer. And so it was a long uh, call. And my window just popped up, said my recording has finally finished schooling. And that call wow. ended at 11. <laughs> yeah, but it, it was long. Are you coming to foundations again this year, Sarah? Or I guess next year in March? Uh, I know we've got a lot of alumni coming. I don't know if I told you, I love to do my numbers when we sign up for foundation. Oh, we should get that for you, Sarah. Yes, we should get her those numbers, Tom. Huh? She wants to see what her numbers were when she signed up for foundations two years ago. We should get everybody those numbers. That's awesome. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, like the, the initial like assessment where we get all yeah. the KPIs. Yeah. Like oh, that's a great that. idea, Sarah. Yeah. yeah. That's a great we idea. Yeah, we can do that. We, um, Sarah, I don't know if you are coming or not this year. I thought I heard you bandied about it. I'm oh, sorry, next year. Um, is because this year the alumni were getting one hotel for everybody to stay in so that you have your own kind of version of, uh, uh, of the main thing. You guys be in separate rooms, but yeah, it's not that much different, right? So after you go back at 10 o'clock at night, then you guys can still work because we know how you are. Crazy. Unless you're in, um, whose group was it that played Cards Against Humanity? Remember, they played all night long. <laughs> yeah. Joanne. I think it was, was Joanne. It was a couple of years ago. Yeah. Paul, maybe? Oh, maybe it was Paul. Yeah. <laughs> Paul mm. Freed. Mm. Hey, I wish I knew. I wish I was there when they were playing. Oh, so funny. Uh, okay, well, we will find yours. Sarah, we'll, we'll dig that out. That sounds cool. Uh, anything else today? What else is going on? Anybody have any questions? Anything going on? Um, we did have, I did have an article that I sent over to Tom. That was like, I just thought it might pop up for people to look at as we're opening. So one of the things I like to do, I'm not sure if you guys like to do this, but hopefully you do is I like to look at things that are outside of our specific industry. Like what are other companies doing? What are other industries doing? How are they maneuvering through you know, this, this pandemic? What are they doing that might be different or the same? Because one of the things that's really awesome about our industry is that we're all really connected and, and we talk about everything with each other. But that's also a little bit of a, a, a holdback for our industry because we talk so much with each other and we share and we, we um, network so much within our industry. A lot of times the same ideas just go around and around and around. So I like to see what other industries are doing. How are they moving forward? So anyway, I, I, um, I found this. I can't remember. Was this? Remember who this was? Um, HR. HR network maybe or Oracle. Oracle, yeah. I found this on Oracle. Next and week. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, next week. And so just seven actions that businesses need to take now. And and over here on the right hand side, it talks about what you know other other businesses are, are doing. Um, the first thing it says is business model assessment, which to me makes great sense. You need to you need to assess your business model right now. What do you have to change because of the pandemic? Do you have to change anything? Does it make sense to change anything? I know a lot of companies in our industry are having to change some things, how they're doing things. I know a few companies that went from teams down to solos. They're now operating as solos. I know some companies that were um, uh, operating independent contractors that found out that just did not work out the way they had hoped when things went a little wonky. And so now they're looking at trying to switch over to uh, an employee model. But um, um, lots of different business model things that you might want to look at. You know, that's one of the things we do, one of the very first things we do in foundations, Tom, remember? The mm -hmm. business model assessment. Business model, that's day one. One. Yeah, I do. You don't happen to know where that is? You know, I promised somebody in in, um, in the success group that I would 
find that and send that over to him. Anyway, all right. It's on SharePoint. It's on SharePoint. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. Um, uh, the next thing is a financial check. I think that's kind of a given, right? Yep. What? Yeah. Do you, do you want um, me to go down and? Yeah, maybe. So this, oh yeah, I like this. I forgot. Here's the checklist. Now that the checklist doesn't say anything that was specific to us, Tom. I don't remember. I like that there's checklists on all of these. Review KPIs, establish or modify baseline metrics that you use to measure change, examine year over year numbers, mm -hmm. survey, determine which your customer segments are buying and engaging. We love all our customers, but some more so than others. Um, so true. Sales channels, uh, customer segments, business models. Um, bu -bu -bu -bu. Talk to customers and prospects. Hmm. I think it, you guys noticed that all of that stuff is stuff that we're doing, right? That we've all been doing in our industry as well. So it's just stuff that makes sense. It's good business news, regardless of the industry. This is the financial checklist. What, what's this say, Tom? Anything good? Yeah. Um, talking about calculating an answer to two fundamental questions. What is your operating expense run rate? So I guess we, 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 we spent a lot of time on this in, in foundations, actually breaking down your, 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 your P&L in terms of separating cost of goods sold from your operating expenses and showing how we use that to calculate, you know, your break-even revenue and break-even jobs and stuff like that. So basically what they're talking about is after you cover all your, your cost of goods sold, how much money do you need on a monthly basis to cover your normal operating expenses. <clears throat> if you remember, we had to go through those calculations or we were supposed to go through those calculations to apply for your idle loan. Yeah. If you are profitable, what is your cash burn rate? And that's a situation where you weren't to your break even revenue. I mean, that's, uh, that's important stuff to know. And really a uh, cash flow is a big deal in our industry because of the, the cash, the way it comes in, we can feel like we have money when we don't. <laughs> I've worked with quite a few companies like that, right? We've worked with a lot of companies like that, Tom, that didn't even know they were going bankrupt. And you know, with all these uh, SBA loans and programs floating around out there, you know, this is even, in my mind, this is even more important because you might be burning cash, you may be burning a lot of cash and you just don't see it because it's it's lost in all this extra money that the SBA has has loaned you. So you can feel even more flush. Yeah. If we're spending more money than we're we're, we're generating in normal operating activities every month, you really want to figure that out before it becomes obvious. Is that you're a, gonna have to pay taxes on that. Yeah. I mean there's a lot there's a lot of uh you know, the old saying, how did you go broke? And it's like, well, slowly at first and then very fast at the end. So, <laughs> oh, so bad, yeah. By the time you figure out that you're you're spending more money than you're making, if you aren't managing it by the numbers, it's uh, sometimes it's kind of a moot point. It's too late. Cash flow projections and uh, working capital needs. How long can you survive with current cash and credit? Yep. At all, these are all kind of in the same area code in terms of, of being related to each other. Explore ways to defer payments, lease towards suppliers, basically just helping with cash flow. People owe you money, you want it as soon as you can get it, and money you owe other people, you want to wait as long as you can before, before you pay them. Examine, <clears throat> re-examine customer acquisition costs and total customer value. Yeah, that's important. We. Um, we do a lot of that in, in Made Central, actually. That's one of the things that, that we do particularly well. But we, we, we talk about this in foundations where on a on a job by job, customer by customer basis, we look at the revenue we generate, and then we look at the labor content or other costs to actually figure out what is your gross profit per customer. If you do that, you're gonna find typically 
that you have a few customers that you would actually wind up with more money in the bank at the end of the month if they just weren't even a customer. That doesn't mean you fire them, but it means that you may need to go back and renegotiate your, 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 your terms with them. Maybe a different scope of work, maybe, you know, increase your rate, change, you know, their schedule, different ways that you can take a customer and make them profitable. But if you aren't looking at this on a, on a house by house basis, you're probably, you're probably cleaning more homes and have less to show for it than, 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 than what you should be. The other thing I really like about this too, that uh, I'm using Main Central as an example, is it doesn't mean that every single customer has to be profitable either, but you need to know which ones are and which ones aren't. You need to know that. You need to be making that decision inten intentionally. You need to be like, yeah, um, this customer is not profitable for me and it actually costs me $2 every time I clean her. But you know what? She's re re she has referred 12 people this year and all of those people turned into customers and I make bank over that two bucks that I spend every time I clean. So that, that would be a time when you might want to keep that, that unprofitable customer. You might even want to lower her rate. Or, you know, we, you know, donate cleanings for various reasons as well. So, I mean, there, it's all over the board in terms of, of what your, what your gross, uh, gross profit is on, on, on a job basis. And you're right. There are times when you might for either benevolent reasons or strategic marketing reasons, make a decision to, to do a job with it, with a negative gross profit, but you need to be doing that purposefully and, and knowing yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, actions towards uh, expediting receivables. Yeah, I mean, a lot of house cleaning companies don't get into uh, receivables that much. If you do commercial, you do um, typically have to deal with that. People owe you money. You need to be keeping up with that, especially if the economy starts to go down. Yes. And right now, everybody's feeling really good and they've got money in the bank. Um, We'll see where we are six months from now. If you have receivables, get them now. Get your money right now from everybody. Put that as job one, because right now people have the money to pay. We don't know where we're going to be in six months, right? So get paid now. Get caught up. So I, I actually deal with a lot of companies, Tom, that um, they do have re receivables, even in residential, because they'll – now. Made Central, you don't have this because Made Central kind of controls that. They're like, nope, can't clean there. They didn't pay. But a lot of companies have receivables. You know, oh, she hasn't paid like three times. I know she's good for it. We've been cleaning for her a long time. A lot of you know what I'm talking about. You've heard this. And you don't really understand how much those receivables are costing you. It's not just that, that amount of money. The whole, the way cash flows really, really um, takes a toll. So anyway, that's a, a much larger conversation, but receivables, don't have them. You don't have to have them. And if you do have some right now, get them all paid, job one. And, you know, depending on what tools you have in place and what systems you have in place, I mean, we've worked with, with companies before where we're like digging into to their QuickBooks, trying to help them figure out why they're not, not getting the return that they would hope to get. And, point out it's like gee it looks like uh, you know you've cleaned this home a half a dozen times and they haven't paid you and it's like what i didn't know that it's like wow okay well That's nobody true. nobody was watching it yeah uh, uh, they're talking about keep looking for funding avenues draw a line of credit to extend your runway explore vendor financing we've talked about this a lot during you know early on in the COVID you know uh, crisis, you want to make sure that you have plenty of working capital. And if you've got your idle monies and your PPP monies, and you know some of us have gone out to banks to get more lines of credit. And um, it's two schools of thought on this. I know there's a lot of people that like the idea of of not having debt, and I'm I'm down with that too. Just uh, make sure that you've got. Yeah, enough cash available to carry you through any any unexpected 
downturn. It's kind of hard to imagine that right now with the uh, adding 2.4 million jobs over the month of May. Everybody's feeling really good. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Somebody, somebody we know well. I, I can't remember if it was Leslie or Steph. Leslie was, turned her idle money's back. Yeah, she put her money back. So, you know, it, it's not that you have to be keeping that, but looking at it is what they're saying, right? Yeah. Yeah. Make, make sure that you're paying attention to what different funding avenues are out there for your specific company. Because a lot of companies didn't do that, weren't ready, and there are companies now that couldn't make it until we reopened. So you don't want to be caught in that situation. But we're um, kind of tight on time, so we're going to kind of yeah. rifle through the rest of these quickly. Health, safety, legal examine uh, and examine and work within city all, all the local you know laws basically facility plan for your warehouse plan we've, we've talked about these before PPE yeah. health safety and, policies. And, and really training falls into this as well right your oh, safety training and, yeah COVID-19 training well we're I think we're more up on this than most other industries I think this is one that we do really well in Scenario planning, sensitivity it's analysis, so nice. sales and profit forecast. That's a fancy word for what if analysis. Just a simple spreadsheet where you change the revenue to see how it impacts uh, the bottom line, gross profit and, and net profit. And adjust the amount. I actually, of have, I actually have our what if spreadsheet right on my desktop, Tom. You want to share? Right yeah, because I pulled it up. Let's see if I, where is it? Here it is. Yep. Let's see. On my screen, I remember it's hard to share. I got to do the application window. Share. Mm. Mm, what did I just do? I'm trying to pull it up. Um, okay, I got to stop sharing mine, I guess. And then I'm going to share yours. There we go. Did, did it flash for a second? All yellow and peach? Nope, it's just all white and white. Hmm. Do you see it now? Nope. What do they call okay. it? A polar, a polar bear in a snowstorm? Well, let's see. Wonder, wonder what I'm doing wrong here. But you're sharing something, or you're trying to. Maybe you've just got the wrong screen selected. I only have one screen. It says StreamYard is sharing a window. Stop sharing or hide. Okay. Let me pull up again. I bet I picked the wrong option for sharing. It gives you a lot of options for sharing here. I'll try one more time. Application window. Let's try this. Nothing? Yes? No. Um, there you go. Bingo. Yeah. See? It? Yeah. See it? yeah, so this is the what if this is model. And you want to explain it, Tom? You're going to be much clearer talking about numbers than I am. Oh, so which, which the peach are the convention that, that, that we use with, with, you know, all the material that, that Liz and I do with uh, spreadsheets is the peach colored cells are the variables that you can change. So, um, and you've got like a base, uh, a baseline and I guess three different scenarios. So you can assume your, your customer loss rate per month, baseline is, is is five percent but if you want to see what happens if you change that to say four percent scenario two you can do that we'll switch um, it over to percent so they can see how all the numbers shift yeah so depending upon what you plug in those peach colored cells for you know customer loss rate um percent leads that book in the first claim percent uh this is new, by the way. I haven't seen this. How long have you had this? 
Oh, this is old, Tom. Look at the copyright on it. 2010. Really? Yeah. Really? Okay. We got so much stuff. It's so old, you don't even remember it. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. number, number of leads per year, per day, so forth. So, depending on how you change those peach uh, colored cells, determines what happens in all the white colored cells, which is what you're really interested in number of customers um, in, in revenue. You see how you can just grow these numbers by changing one thing. So, this, so these are cool little spreadsheets that you can like, create and, and work with that have a lot of great information, I think. Oh, um, look at this, like this, you know I didn't create this. Look at the spelling on regular. Number of regular customers. This is the protected sheet, it says. Yeah. All right, well, anyway, I know we have other stuff we're looking at. I'll get rid of this and I'll stop sharing. I just thought it would be interesting to see what we're talking about. And then they're actually talking about this in this article is, you know, run, run, run some of these and, and find out what, what, what opportunities you have in your business and, and what challenges you might have and where you're going. And, you know, just sort of running different scenarios. Well, if things do get bad in September, what might that look like? Yeah. Right? If they don't, what might that look like? And this all ties in together back to the financial sheet. You know, what is your, you know, operating expenses on a, on a, on an average month? You need to know that because you need to know and, and you need to, to be able to put, do sensitivity analysis to figure out how many homes you need to clean in order to cover that. And if you're only at, say, 80 percent of revenue, are you making money? Are you losing money? What do you need to change in order to get yourself to the level of profitability that, that you need to be. Or, you know, if, if you can't hire enough people, I mean, the, the questions go on and on and on, but you need to know how that translates into, you know, your ability to pay the bills and, 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 and make money and accomplish the things that you set out to accomplish, the whole reason you're in business to begin with. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, well, we've only got about five minutes here, Tom. Did you, was, well, can we get, hit that that uh, thing one more time? Just get, go through the rest of the questions. I think, what were we on, number five, maybe? Yeah, we're number five, customer retention and acquisition, I think is number six. Maybe we can jump on this Tuesday since it's going to be kind of an open, you know, catch up for the week. We can, sure. can swing back to this because this is awesome. I like this. Yeah, it's good stuff. Pricing. Yeah. Is this a good time to be uh, looking at all your customers and, and what your uh, bill rate per hour and gross profit is on a, on, a, on a per home basis? And is this a good time to consider price increases? And really just thinking about it in terms of strategy, not in terms of, Tom, are you raising your prices? Liz, are you raising your prices? You know, Sarah, are you raising your prices? What's your strategy for your company? How are you thinking about what you're going to do, whatever your strategy is, you'll be able to justify. It's going to be really hard for you to justify my strategy, right? If, if you're like, well, I know this other cleaning business and they raise their prices 5% when your customer calls to complain, <laughs> it's not going to fly. <laughs> they, don't, they don't really care how much I raise my customers. <laughs> Organizational alignment is the last one, which kind of makes sense because I mean, some of us have had shut down completely for a while and you know i think all of us had seen some loss of income that you know made us take a look at our organization and make some adjustments on the indirect labor side um when we're piecing it back together and ramping up again what's the most uh, it's an opportunity you know how do how do we get our organization put together in a way to uh, perform at a higher level we're um into this here for the last few minutes so well we'll swing back to this we'll, we'll play with this some more next week um want to share again our schedule for next week since this is gonna be um be new for us you're also not sharing your screen tom if you think you are yeah you're right i knew that because i was and then i wasn't yeah then i was so i was like showing that I'm glad that we didn't spend more time looking at the. Uh, I would have called you out on that. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. 
<laughs> I can see it. <laughs> I can tell because you were looking over there. Sean's going to be be with us Monday, and we're going to be learning some tips to help with recruiting. And I think a lot of us are in a situation now where, where that would be useful. So I'm excited about that. Yeah, me too. He's a great guy too. So for those of you that don't know Sean, uh, not only are you going to really love this information, he's actually a really great guy. He's really interesting. And I, I think everybody's going to really enjoy having him on, uh, on, on uh, Facebook Live next week. He's a... Uh... Full of energy, dynamic, funny. He's, he's yeah. Cool. yeah, cleaning business owner. He um out of out of Cleveland. Cleveland, Ohio. Right. And he's done a lot of stuff too. He hasn't just, you know, he's not like a one trick pony. Yeah, you're right. You're right. He's uh so um we're we're about out of time here. Does anybody um have any any questions? Uh, I just want to hit on real quick, Tom, about um, just a reminder that you can't sign anybody up for for classes, but create your um, your schedule, you guys. Next week, you'll be able to, and you're going to be able to organize it. You're going to be able to manage that really well. So get your list of people, figure out who's taking what classes, how are they going to do it, and you know how are you gonna how are you gonna implement that? Make make your plan now. Get that done. But don't do much more than that because it's Friday. Right. Enjoy your weekend. Yeah. And uh, Monday morning at 10 o'clock, you can jump into um, school.moderncleaning.com and go crazy with your training. It'll be awesome. All you right. Guys, be safe. Going. Get some rest. Enjoy your weekend. Uh, join us back here Monday, 5 o'clock Eastern. We'll hear from Sean Day and jump into our new format for smart business moves. Thanks guys. I'll be, take, I'll be taking a poll on Monday. I wanna know how many people got haircuts over the weekend. I'm just curious. Bye y'all. Bye bye.